All right, in the second program, we're going to start just the way we have in the past. We're going to copy our first program. So I'm going to copy this first program, move it to the bottom, create some room here, and right away, I got to change my name. So let's make this second PV program. Now, the second program, the idea was to incorporate more inputs. So let's add our inputs here. So we want our future value as a double. And we also want our num periods as double. All right, we've added our two new variables in. We know we want those to go into our calculation. So let's just update our calculation right here. All right, our PV answer is now updated to have a more complete calculation. Now, what we need are values for future value and num periods. We don't have values yet. We're going to have to go to the user to get them. So let's copy our input box and make two more input boxes. Notice I'm reusing as much code as I can. I know it works for one. Two, it saves me some typing. So let's take future value, paste that in there, number of periods in there. Now I'm not done because I need to cue the user on what it is they actually should be giving me, right? We can't say enter your annual interest rate and put that in the future value. So instead we can say enter future value and we can say enter number of periods. This is still the PV calculator, so we can use these titles just the same. But now we probably want to change our default value, right? Because the default value isn't likely to be 10% for future value. Instead, maybe let's go with $100. Seems reasonable. Number of periods, again, we don't want 0.1 periods. Let's just start with a default of one period. All right, so now we have three different values coming in. We got the present value of our answer. We calculate that and we give it back in a message box. Let's go see if it works. Now we have two options for running it again. We can go into macros and run our second program. Let's do that this time. Next time we'll add a button. So we run it. We see what's the annual interest rate, 10%. We'll say OK. Cash flow of 100, OK. Number of periods, 1, OK. Now we get an answer of $90.90. Let's check that real quick by changing our future value. Yep, $90.90. Looks like it's working. Let's try it with some different parameters though. Let's try 8% and five periods. So now we go back to macros, let's run it again. Actually, I said we'd add a button. So let's add our button down here for second PV program. We'll assign it the second PV program macro, say okay. Let's change that text so it looks a little bit better. Second PV program. Let's run it. So now we want to do 8%, not 0 0.8, 0 0.08. Future value 100, number of periods 5. And we get an answer of 68.5, which does match to what we had from the Excel PV function. So it looks like things are working out OK. The answer is not the best though, right? It just pops the answer up. We can add a little bit more, you know, pizzazz to this. We can make the user experience a little bit better. So let's go back into our code and add a new response, a new text box that's a little bit more informative for the user. So to make this a little bit more usable for the, for the user, more readable, we're going to create a new variable. And we're going to create this new variable. We're going to call it text answer as string. So we haven't talked a lot about string variables yet, but what string variables are, are words, right? They're basically, you know, hello in one of our earliest program was a string variable. So strings are words, doubles, integers, those are gonna be numbers. So a string is simply what we call a string of letters or a word. So we're gonna initiate this as a string. Now we're gonna use the concatenate property that we have from Excel, right? Where we use ampersands to put together different words to make our text answer. Now that we've initiated text answer as a string variable, we can actually put values in it. So let's start text answer and say what it's equal to. So we can say that the present value of your cash flows are, and here's where we can use that concatenate feature from Excel, right? That ampersand sign, again, that's shift seven, allows you to pull in and basically put together 
variables or numbers with words or put multiple strings together. So in this case, we can attach it to PB answer. So we're going to say the present value of your cash flows are blank. And actually present value, so let's change that to is. All right, the last thing we need to do is just a message box to show now our text answer. And now let's flip back to Excel to see what that looks like. All right, so we hit run the second program. Let's just use our defaults again. We get our initial answer without any extra information. And there we see a message box that gives us a little bit more insight. The present value of your cash flow is 90.90999 and a bunch of those 90s repeating. All right, it's at least better. We still have that mess of those 90.90990s, but we'll clean that up again eventually. All right, let's say okay. And Now, while we're going to clean up our number eventually, first, let's just clean up our message box. So the message box here, notice that the first thing it takes in is text answer. We can actually put some additional arguments here. And as soon as we hit a comma, it starts telling us what those can be. So the first thing is the buttons. So we can use different types of buttons to kind of alert the user to what's going on. We're not going to use those in this case. Uh, or actually, let's just use VB information. So it's going to kind of give an informative button, so to speak. Uh, and then finally, the title. That's what we really want to get to. We've already said that this is our PV calculator. So let's make it look consistent. So now we're going to say PV calculator. And now we can rerun this. We're going to see our message box change just a little bit. And now it's called PV calculator as well. So flipping back, running it one more time. We say OK. We'll take our default parameters. Our first message box comes up. And now our second message box, it comes with a sound. It's VB information, so it has this little information logo. And now it says the present value of your cash flows is, and then our long number. Okay, we'll clean that up in the next video, and we'll add a couple more pieces of functionality and also include all these other arguments into our function, into our program, the same way we did with our user-defined function.